Before Tom Brady, Joe Montana was looked at as the greatest NFL player of all time. He dominated the league for nearly a decade and a half and was part of arguably the best quarterback wide receiver duo in NFL history. Today, Joe Montana is worth over $150 million, but he only earned $25.5 million during his career. How did he make all that money? Join us as we break down the life and career of Joe Cool from his early days to what he is up to now. Joe Montana was born on June 11, 1956 in New Eagle, Pennsylvania to Joe Sr. and Teresa Montana. His parents both worked at a finance company, his father as a manager and his mother as a secretary. During high school, Montana was an elite athlete and recognized as one of the top basketball and football players in the state of Pennsylvania. It would take him some time to make a name for himself in football. He had to wait until his junior year to take over as the team's starting quarterback. However, once he got his chance, he did not look back and was named an All-American in his senior year. Joe initially committed to North Carolina State as a result of it being one of the few schools that was going to let him play both sports. Montana ultimately chose Notre Dame, which was influenced by his admiration for Terry Hanratty, a Notre Dame alumnus. Despite being a top prospect, Montana's freshman year saw limited playing time with 507 passing yards and more interceptions than touchdowns. A shoulder injury sidelined him for his entire sophomore year, but he made a strong comeback as the starting quarterback in his junior year, leading Notre Dame to an 11-1 record and a Cotton Bowl victory over Texas 38-10. In his senior year, Montana further excelled, throwing for 2,010 yards and securing another Cotton Bowl win over the Houston Cougars 35-34, showcasing his resilience and skill that would define his legendary football career. Montana was greatly overlooked by scouts leading up to the draft. He was eventually selected with the 82nd overall pick and was the fourth quarterback off of the board. With Montana only being a third round pick and the San Francisco 49ers already having an established quarterback in Steven McBurg, he was forced to once again work his way up the depth chart. Over the first two years, he still struggled to lead the 49ers to team success. He started eight games and finished with a record of two and six. In the 1981 season, Montana would finally earn the starting spot and immediately established himself as one of the top talents in the league. He finished the season with 3,565 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions, while completing 63.7% of his passes. He led the 49ers to an incredible 13-3 record while making his first Pro Bowl and earning a spot on the All-Pro second team. He also led the 49ers to their first of many Super Bowl titles with him at the helm, beating the Bengals 26-21 in Super Bowl 16. Montana threw for 157 yards, one touchdown and zero interceptions. He also ran for 18 yards and a touchdown on the ground. The performance earned him the Super Bowl MVP award. Despite the success that came in the 1981 season, they would not be able to sustain it the following year. In the shortened nine-game season due to a player strike, Montana led the team to a rough three and six record. The following season would be a return to form for the 49ers and Montana would lead them to a 10 and six record. He finished the year throwing for 3,910 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions while completing 64.5% of his passes. However, they would be eliminated in the second round of the playoffs. In 1984, San Francisco would be back with a vengeance. Montana led the team to a record 14-1 as a starter and threw for 3,630 yards, 28 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions while completing 64.6% of his passes. They would continue to steamroll teams in the postseason and win Super Bowl 19 against the Miami Dolphins. It was a dominant win for the San Francisco 49ers with a final score of 38 to 16. Montana took home another Super Bowl MVP award after throwing for 331 yards, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions while picking up an additional 59 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Over the next three consecutive seasons, the 49ers would be bounced in their first game of the playoffs. Montana would continue to prove himself as one of the top talents that the game has ever seen. However, it did not translate to wins in the postseason. Shockingly, these three seasons would be the first three years that Jerry Rice would spend with the team. 
Bryce would end up being arguably the best wide receiver of all time and play an integral role in the 49ers' elite passing attack throughout this era. The 1988 and the 89 seasons would be an historic run for the San Francisco 49ers. Over this stretch, they would win two Super Bowls, and Montana took home the first MVP award of his career in the 1989 season. In Super Bowl 23, Montana and the Niners would beat the Cincinnati Bengals, going on a 92-yard drive to score the winning touchdown to Jonathan Taylor with less than a minute left. This drive was the defining moment of Montana's Joe Cool reputation. The following year, the Niners would defend their title against the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 24. They set a record for the biggest win in Super Bowl history, taking the game by a final score of 55-10. Montana took home his fourth title and third Super Bowl MVP after throwing for 297 yards, five touchdowns, and zero interceptions. In 1990, Montana and the 49ers aimed for a third straight Super Bowl victory and secured the league's top record at 14-2. However, their journey was halted in the NFC Championship game by a last-second field goal from the New York Giants. During this crucial game, Montana suffered a brutal sack by Leonard Marshall, leading to his exit due to multiple injuries, including a broken finger, a bruised back, and a concussion. Further examinations revealed a significant injury to his throwing elbow, sidelining him for the entire 1991 season. These injuries also caused Montana to miss most of the 1992 season, clearing the path for Steve Young to take over as the 49ers' main quarterback. Montana was then traded to the Kansas City Chiefs in 1993. Montana retired as one of the most decorated players in NFL history. He was named to the Pro Bowl eight times, the All-Pro team three times, won two MVPs, the 1989 Offensive Player of the Year Award, the 1986 Comeback Player of the Year Award, four Super Bowls, three Super Bowl MVPs, made the Hall of Fame All-1980s team, and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2000. Joe Montana currently lives with his wife Jennifer in a two-bedroom condo in San Francisco. The home is 1,873 square feet, parquet wooden flooring, arched windows, and doors. He made the purchase in 2015 for $2.275 million. Montana has done incredibly well with his money since retirement, currently having a net worth in the neighborhood of $150 million. This is very impressive as he only made $25.5 million during his entire time in the league. To put this into perspective, Joe Burrow made $55 million in the 2023 season. Montana was able to vastly grow his wealth in retirement through endorsements and great investments. Some of his most memorable endorsements have come through his work with Guinness, Schick, Papa John's, MasterCard, and AT&T. Some big name companies that he invested in early include Pinterest, Airbnb, Robinhood, and GitLab. His biggest win came from his investment in GitLab. Montana invested $100,000 into the company in 2015, and after the company went public, the investment today is worth over $63 million. Following in his father's path, Montana developed a keen interest in finance and has actively engaged in angel investing, supporting emerging companies. This venture has turned out to be highly fruitful, making him one of the few players from his time to significantly increase their wealth post-retirement. Additionally, Montana has maintained strong connections with the 49ers, recently being honored as an honorary captain for the team's 2023 NFC Championship game against the Detroit Lions, where the Niners won in thrilling fashion, overcoming a 17-point deficit to win 34-31.